All right, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Drinks with Johnny. Thanks for being here with me today. Hope you guys all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know I did. Sam, how was your Thanksgiving? Sam the Hawk Hawkins, my co-host, as always, here today. I beat you in flag football two years in a row for Friendsgiving, so I'm, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> that was Saturday. I asked about your Thanksgiving, not your Friendsgiving, uh, thank, asshole. Thanks, Thanksgiving was good with the family. It's, it's always great. Thankful for all I got and, you know, just getting through the end of the year we're in the holidays now it's fantastic yes. uh starting to get the music going my daughter's playing a bunch and i'm always looking for new uh music and today's guest we we got some good new music for the holidays here yes of course taria turin and uh Formerly of Nightwish, now, I mean, that's been so many years now. You've been doing your own thing for a lot of time now. And just uh, earlier in the month of November, you dropped the Dark Christmas album. Um, so uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, we're, it's perfect timing right now for us. We're all in the spirit right now. The people on YouTube could see us in the spirit. If you're, on the, if you're just listening, you can't see us, but that's okay. Just know that we're in the holiday spirit here with Taria today. So how are you today? And you're all the way in, are you in Finland still? No, actually, okay. from Spain, from Andalusia. I live here ever, well, seven years from now. Oh, okay. Southern part of Spain. How'd you and fall into there? That, yeah, before that, I was living in Buenos Aires many, many years. So I'm kind of a Latina in me already, <laughs> converted. Wow, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think I realize that because every, everywhere we read and everywhere we talk about, it's been, uh, you know, focusing on your Finnish background where, you're, uh, where you were originally born. Sure. So, what, and you've been in Spain for how long now? Seven years, you said? Seven years, yes. Okay. Yeah, but wow. of course, I'm waving the Finnish flag with proud. Or of course, <laughs> to be honest, of course, naturally. But hey, it's been a long since I lived there. Mm. Gotcha, gotcha. So I got. Can we dive into your album real quick? I mean, I, I really enjoy it. It's uh, your takes on it are really cool, and it starts. I mean, your voice very much lends to the Christmas spirit. But you guys do that little twist on a lot of these, which just kind of. <laughs> yeah, and it's so fun. Like, uh, a well, a lot. Uh, yeah, I was like, it's not just a little, dude. <laughs> yeah, no. It's... I don't know what Christmas al albums you've been listening to the last few years, <laughs> but this one's very different. I was, I was listening back to it uh, when we knew you guys were coming, or when you knew you were coming on Taria, yeah, like last week. I started listening to a few songs here and there, um, and yeah, it's a, uh, it's a dark Christmas album. It's, it's. I mean, you're taking what you already do uh, with your other, uh, you know, with your voice and the other songs that you've done over the years and uh, kind of applying it to these Christmas songs. I mean, you're, you're, you're classically trained and read somewhere. You got like a three and a half vocal range, uh, octave That's vocal whatever. range. I don't know what the hell oh, that was. <laughs> I read it somewhere. I read it somewhere. Yeah. Tyler. Just, just own it. Just say yes. Just say yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. But yeah, you bring yeah. in that classical, you bring in that classical um, uh, song uh, or, or style to songs like Jingle Bell Rock, like some of the some of the Christmas songs, yes, I can understand what Sam's saying. It very much lends itself, but Jingle Bell Rock is not one that I would expect to be sung in this in this uh, vein. That's great. I'm happy. Yeah, I, I like shocking people a bit, you know, with my doings in general. Um, I've been doing Christmas tours since ever 2005 already. It's becoming like a, oh, it is already a tradition for me to go on tour every December and uh, here down here in Europe mainly you know but uh, this time I'm presenting my dark Christmas album in some countries with the uh, symphonic orchestra choir with some band members and so they're really beautiful um, events but you know the album is uh, it's dark it's a uh, cinematographic I would say it's kind of like a yeah, Halloween kind of a <laughs> more than a Christmas. But the songs are super known, as you said. Yeah. They're really, really known songs and the, my the arrangement's different. I love this because it's like, you know, these original songs, they do not really attract me that much, you know? Mm. Uh, you get an overload of them when you are, you know, in this time of the year. You get a, like a it's too much, too much. Yeah, yeah. I usually do like a playlist of like the holiday classics. Yeah. And then after a few days, I'm like, I've literally heard every version of every song at this point. <laughs> but a lot of people reinvent the same one. I, I do right. like you're taking it and it's not like, oh, here's 
this new voice on the same song I've heard a million times. Yeah. It's like, here's a new take on the song. But uh, that's exactly and- that, that was kind of my wish, you know, that how many people they do hate Christmas music. They will never, ever find Christmas music something appealing. Mm. Uh, they kind of don't want to have anything to do with it. But that's, music- the Grinches, that's the Grinches and the Scrooges of the world that, we, that we, yeah. we, we don't even need to. We don't need to acknowledge them, Tari. We can just move on from them. Yeah. This album is for them. <laughs> they got something. Oh, it now. is for them. Yeah, they have something now. There you go. But that that was my basic idea, really, to approach these people that do not enjoy Christmas music, that if I could approach them uh, with these different arrangements, the mm. songs that everybody know, yeah, but the arrangements are so drastically different. So maybe there is hope, you know, that as as far as I've seen in my shows every year, you know, there are metal fans coming to see them. There are music lovers in general coming coming to listen to me um people are coming with their children the whole bunch of families are coming and music is it's it's needed at this right. time of year it's a dark time of a year actually for me as a finnish woman you know it's very dark up there north you know? oh yeah oh yeah it's really dark and people <laughs> get depression and they get there's a lot of loneliness and you know christmas is not easy for everybody so music is there mm. oh that's a great point yeah i've, I've traveled good. through europe in the in the winter time for you know uh yeah. special what i absolutely love it though because i'm just visiting i'm not living in it right so like when i'm going through they have all the really fun um holiday uh marketplaces set up like in in majority of the cities around yes. uh, around europe and they're fucking phenomenal. Sam, if you haven't seen them or been down there, I have not. they're super fun. Lacey loves, I bring my wife out there if we're traveling this time of year. You get, you know, you get your hot drinks and your and your treats and you walk around. They got all sorts of like ornaments and just, it's just a holiday festival like in the town, in all these town squares. It's fantastic. I mean, Tarya, you, you grew up out there. How was that growing up? Do you have fond memories? I mean, were they do, I, I, I'm ignorant to it because I, I've only seen it since touring. But when you're, when you're growing up, is that something that you and the family make sure you do every year is get down to those uh, those marketplaces? Yeah, for sure. Actually, that kind of tradition came to Finland recently. It's okay. more like Czech Republic, Germany. They These people, they have started the long, long time ago, their tradition of the Christmas markets. But in Finland, it's... Christmas has always been like a more like a family celebration. It's so damped, um, a lot of snow, really cold usually that yeah. time of the year. So people tend to close themselves in their house, houses with the families, within the families, you know, and um, just nobody's out. <laughs> kind of. right. we, uh, we have I've the seen that. The only we were walking around, it seemed like very desolate last time I was there. Just the only thing open was. Uh, the karaoke bar that we'd go to every night, and then uh, <laughs> detox ourselves over at the over at the saunas, uh, where you ha- have a sauna, detox, and then have a beer immediately, and go straight back to the karaoke bar. And that's all you did in the winter. <laughs> sauna, sauna is a must. I'm not sure about the karaoke, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure. I'm, I'm when you're sure. drunk, the karaoke seems like a good time. <laughs> I, I think uh, it's uh, it's something like uh, for the Finnish people, you know, after a couple of drinks. Everything is possible, and there is a lot of music around. So anyway, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, that's great. So you got videos for all of these, and which I thought was pretty cool that you you got them all. And you know, I was looking at the comments, and someone wrote, uh, "I really hope Tim Burton is getting her for a soundtrack or something like that." And that honestly, a lot of the stuff that I was listening to is like, "Oh man, this lens so perfect." Which a lot of movies now are taking like old modern like hit songs like pop songs and then they'll kind of do a darker twist for maybe like you know an action film or a scary film and i and so many especially um all i want for christmas i just it's got to be in a trailer for some christmas <laughs> horror movie or something it, it lends perfect for it it's, it's pretty cool that, i really like that that would be nice that would be absolutely absolutely nice yeah of course as fa- soundtracks uh, film music has been um, my inspiration since ever I started, you know, writing music myself, and that was a long time ago. But yeah, mm. how do you do the arrangements of them? Yeah, yeah. How, how do you find your arrangements of them? Well, Jim Dooley, he's working in LA actually. He's a LA-based um, film composer. He's um, mm. 
mainly working with film scores, you know. So he's absolutely talented, super talented in that. He's been working with, with me ever since my first rock album in 2007, um, doing arrangements for all of these albums. But I have a very, you know, very important symphonic side in my music, in my rock music. So he's he's doing them with me together, those arrangements. But And since I have a classical background, you know, I have a lot of studies, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of studies. When I was young. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, of course, I have the knowledge, but you know, not not the tools. I'm not. Uh, I was going to ask. So, what what was your classical background training specifically? Like, uh, what? Obviously, it's mostly in vocals, I assume. But like, where you? Where did you go to school for this to be classically trained, or or, or yeah, what kind of teachers see, did you have? Yeah, since ever I was very little, I've been um, I've been studying music, actually classical music. I started when I was six uh, with piano, and then it was just like my way to escape the reality kind of uh I, I really was badly bullied in a primary and you know music was always there kind of the the only exit door for me you know and so I found it very very early age that uh, this is something I want to do and this is something I want to focus on and and um, I studied in uh, the only music university in Finland that is called Sibelius Academy I was there first, and then I continued my studies in Germany in Karlsruhe, another wow. music university. So a lot of lot of studies, all until my I don't know. I was already in Nightwish, you know, performing and making world tours and all that, and I was still in university. Was oh really? How did you make time for that? <laughs> it was really tough. It was really yeah. tough. Mm. But <laughs> it was so I dropped crazy. I dropped out of school to join the band that I went in at the beginning, so I I, I couldn't imagine actually finishing through school with that. <laughs> no, it was it was crazy, crazy, but uh, it was worth it though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so when you you did mention though you in your writings you use the the classical training for writing stuff in film com uh, compositions. What are some of your favorite film compositions, and have you given up on it, or do you still want to like? work on some film compositions or is there something that maybe I haven't heard of that you've been a part of? No, no, no. There were a couple of projects that um, kind of died, nothing to mention, you know, but I, yeah. I would love to, I would love to write a score, a score, a movie, um, anything. Um, I'm a big fan of that world, but you know, nothing yet. Nothing yet. Yeah. What kind of movies do you like? I'm yeah, what's, yeah. What's, what kind of movies? What kind of movies and film scores do you like? Though, like, well, uh, as composers, I, I of course, of course, I adored Zimmer is my like my hero, um, you know. But um, also, Craig Armstrong is another composer. I really enjoy his works. Also, mm. his piano works, not only the film works, but um, you know, mm, yeah, um, I would see myself doing a lot with piano because it's an instrument that I use for compositions in general. Right. When I'm writing my songs, but but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I'm a romantic person, so maybe <laughs> something somewhere there. I don't know, but not too um, not too funny though. It needs to be melancholic. Mm. Oh, like what? Let's what's Summer. some of your favorites? Movies. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, Gladiator is one of the like the the wow. most. The, the most Russell Crowe yeah okay that was a good movie Joaquin that Phoenix great. yeah that was a fantastic movie I you talk about scores a score on that one too I mean that's got yeah. it all as far as a Amazing. just Amazing. masterpiece yeah mm. and so you also mentioned uh predominantly in the uh piano is where you, where you work I was listening to uh it just came to my attention through your management lap this morning so I had to listen to it right before we came on uh you did a cover of my band Avenged Sevenfold's Afterlife on your, uh, uh, what was that? The Live at Metal Church. Is that, oh, I, I just had to listen to it on Apple, so I didn't watch, I didn't have a lot of time to, to do a lot of research. Were you playing the piano on that while you were singing? No, no, no. Mm. Okay. It was a one-off concert, actually, in, um, you know, the Wacken Open Air every every year here in Europe, uh, huge metal festival. I oh, was yeah. I was performing my set my rock with my rock band, you know, that year. And the Wacken Open Air, they invited me to do a special concert in the village of Wacken, in their church. 
And so I'm very, you know, used to do church concerts and this kind of with the string corded, actually. It was a piano, cello, violin and the voice. Mm. And the church was packed with metal fans. It was a day before the festival started and I performed one of your songs. Yes, I did. I did a lot of other uh, metal covers. I even sang Ave Maria for the people. I always do that kind oh. of shocking, you know, because it... And, you know, that Ave Maria of mine, that was my own composition, uh, was broadcasted for the for the whole crowd in Wacken for 80,000 people right wow. before my rock show from the oh, screen. Wow. Oh, it was, I never, I did not know that they are going to do that. And oh, uh, wow. I did not expect that. So I'm hearing, oh, Ave Maria <laughs> there. Hello. What the hell is going on? <laughs> I am about to go on stage. This is with- you're about to go on stage and you hear that. That's that's throwing you for a loop right there. It was so amazing. I mean, seriously, it was like wow moment for me because that's so cool. what I do. That's what I've always done ever since my beginning with metal. I was a weird birdie ever since. I was a classically trained, I am classically trained soprano and shook a bit the whole world of metal with <laughs> oh yeah i mean i remember hearing you earlier on on on, on the nightwish stuff i mean when i was uh you know just getting into newer metal i mean i grew up on metallica megadeth you know all, all the ones my parents were showing me led zeppelin black sabbath um but nightwish was in 96 and it didn't really make its way over to southern california maybe other plates in the states but didn't really make its way over to southern california for several years after that so this is when I'm, you know, getting out of high school and joining this band. I'm hearing of this band, Nightwish. I remember hearing it, it was like, yeah, the 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 marriage of your voice with the very progressive metal. It's not even just regular metal. It's like progressive metal happening underneath it. Actually, lends really well because there's so much classical uh, steepness in that progressive metal, right? And I remember just like hearing it going, "This is a really cool sound. I really hope it keeps going." And you know, there's been several other bands in the uh, Scandinavia region that have have done this now over the years too. And but you guys certainly, uh, to my knowledge, would have been on the forefront of that when you when you lent your vocals to that band. Um, you, know, you could we could briefly get through that because I know it, you've been out of there for since 2006. So yeah, it, uh, it was um, it was. Uh... For me, you know, I was very clear ever since the beginning of my, um, you know, when I started in 96, as you said, with the band, I was very clear that, hey, I don't know much about metal. I, I was uh, really like a weirdo in the scene, but I was always embraced by the mm. scene, by the people. And that was the thing that that really connected me with the scene and uh, also made me fall in love with metal. And so it's, it's like... Um, wow, things can happen in this life. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, and then you continued, I mean, like you use your classical training more, but you still have this metal steeped in it, you know, uh, in, in what you're doing with your solo project since then. Um, so, I mean, since then, you, since you didn't know much about metal before, what's been your metal education to like keep you going through with it? Wow. You know, it, you know, the only album I think I had in my collection was Metallica's Black Album when I started. Hey, it's a fantastic one. Hey, that's that's a good one to start on. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> but it was mainly that. And uh, yeah, then then a few years later, of course, I when I got to the band, I started like, okay, well, what is around there? And I, I really fell in love with Rammstein and... Uh, and uh, in flames and you Ooh, know in really looking, but not too many female singers i was like really right. looking for who is there around and i remember there were not too many girls around at that time mm. yet no right. no thankfully we are a lot but but um at that time not much lacuna coil i think and with intention it was more or less the same time that they started also and right but I didn't ever get to see the girls in the festivals. It was like, fuck, where are they? Hey, I am alone again. <laughs> oh, yeah. you didn't get to, did you ever meet Christina? Yes, of course, many times. Oh, okay, I, okay, now you have, yeah, yeah. Friends. I was like, oh yeah, because the now, coil, yeah. At that time, you know. At like, the time. Yeah, it was, but yeah, hey. She's amazing, she's amazing. Good friend, we did a Iron Maiden tour together um, and some other oh, yeah. shows and stuff. She's, so we, we, we've kept in, in touch since then. She's, she's fantastic. She's really sweet. 
Do you have any new new artists that you you're hearing that uh, up and comers, female artists that you're kind of like, they got something there, or any that are on your radar? God, that's a tough question because I'm I'm so old music lover in general that I I I don't get to keep track on things, and I'm so we talk into- about that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, it's a really tough, really really tough uh, thing. Sometimes you know when I'm going on tour, I. I love to take support acts, you know, with me, with girls singing. I mm. want to give them my support and and really make them feel that, you know, hey, ooh, <laughs> we are here, we're strong. And so, but now that you ask me if I need to mention some, oh, shit, it's really tough. It's tough. <laughs> don't, don't, don't feel bad. Good do, there's too many good ones. I do that too. Like we talk on the show all the time, like, I get, you know, new bands, upcoming bands. Sometimes we get upcoming bands here on the show, you know, to help promote them and, yeah. uh, you know, some fans or, or some bands rather that I become fans of. But, uh, you know, finding it these days, I'm just, it's not the way we used to find music when we were kids. You know what I mean? No. It's a completely new way, which it's, is easier. It is easier. I know how to pick up a phone. I know how to use a phone. Hey, yes. But it, it's not where my, I think to do it because <laughs> no, that's not how I was raised. <laughs> No, absolutely. You're absolutely right about that. Yeah. It's exactly like that. You know, I see my daughter picking up a phone and uh, checking out things or coming up with a new bands that she's listening. I'm like, and what is that then? You know, yeah. it's interesting how these kids, how they you know, how they brains work. They work so differently than ours. Oh Honestly, God. it is. It is insane to see. But um, I will mention real quick, because I'm going to piggyback off that question and give a shout out to Boy Genius. Now, they're probably a little bit bigger than I realized, but I just heard them. Uh, I was watching Saturday Night Live from this. Uh, from Me too. The past That's where weekend. I got them. And I was watching this performance. And at first I was kind of like, oh, man, this is another one of those indie bands, something, whatever, like. Cool, cool. And then as I'm watching it, I'm not even trying to be. I was starting to become entranced with their performance and the oh. songs. And I, and it was just very unique. I'm glad you saw this too, Sam. Boy Genius. Yeah, boy Genius. Definitely, right. definitely a band for, for you to check out too. Oh. Um, not, I wouldn't consider them metal by any stretch of the term. Uh, they're definitely more rock. But, yeah. but it's different. I mean, it's just kind of, it's it's very talented group of females that are, that are put together something Pretty exciting, I think. I'm gonna I'm gonna check out more of their career. It felt Nirvana like watching. It did. Kind of. It really know. did. It really did. Yeah. I agree. Oh. Um, what is, is your your daughter into music at all? You, you mentioned your daughter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She 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 was, you know, a uh, touring child, touring baby. I took her all over the place ever since she was born. Because I'm uh, working. We're working as a couple, my husband and me. So. Um, we were as a family on the road the four first years of her life and she was a touring child she she completely yeah my my crew was super happy to have a baby room <laughs> and you know she's kind of uh since ever the diapers she's been around with music and of course she's into it and plays drums actually she's really well and because how old is she now 11 we just 11 okay Perfect time playing drums. Perfect time to start that real career out there. Yeah, exactly. We just got her new Tama tam, set of Tama drums at home. Uh, mm. It's second second drum set, and she's really excited and plays also piano, sings and all that, and is even acting. But hey, music is coming eventually. I think it's annoyingly easy for her somehow still, you know, annoyingly. (laughs) It makes you mad. It makes you a little jealous because it was a little harder for you, maybe. (laughs) 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 I love that. That's, 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 that's some good mom jealousy right there. Yeah. I, I, somehow it's so weird, you know, there is not much, well, the struggle comes, the struggle comes, I think, I guess, I guess it comes. It will, it will, it will. It's like, like, uh, okay, well, this is like this, and how do you do that? Do you do that? <laughs> are you guys are you guys jamming with it, with each other pretty often? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Oh, that's, oh, awesome. that's so cool. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I hope I hope to get that. I don't want to force music on my son, but like, and he's only six now. I'm oh, like, yeah. but like fingers crossed when he gets a little bit older, he still he wants to play music and wants to jam with me. So, because I, I, I got to imagine that's gonna be the coolest. Yeah, because I didn't force my daughter either. I mean, mm. it was really up to her it is up to her god right. knows what she 
wants to do with her life here. But hey, at least she's showing us like she's inter- really, really, truly interested. Um, Who knows what they want to do with their life at any point in their life? I still don't know what I want to do with my life. Exactly. <laughs> Just turned 39 a week ago. I'm like, <laughs> you are still I don't very know what to do. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll start a podcast. Let's do that, you know? (laughs) Uh, What are the holidays like for for your family? Speaking of family, do you guys do it at home? You guys go somewhere else? What what do you guys do? Well, actually, this year um, I go... Well, you're busy touring, too. Yes, I'm busy touring, but um, I fly directly from Czech Republic to Finland. My family flies from home from here to Finland with our... Spanish friends, actually a few families are joining us, our friends oh. are joining us in Finland and they've never been in Finland. So obviously, obviously I'm going to be the tourist guide, totally oh, yeah. destroyed after tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I was saying to them already like, hey, <clears throat> let me rest one day and then I'm going to be fine <laughs> with yeah. you. Even God needed one day of rest, right? So yeah. you're going you're gonna to need, you're gonna need that. <laughs> But we're going to go to Lapland, we're going to go, hopefully we'll get a, well, they are skiing there already, so we will have a lot of snow, hopefully not minus 30 degrees Celsius. As, mm. as. Yeah. You know, I've only been to Helsinki in Finland, I think. Maybe, no, that's not true. I've been to like one or two other cities, but only like big cities. Uh, what, what city were you originally born Tampere. and raised in? Maybe Tampere. Oh, okay. Tampere, if you have been there. Mm. Turku. Which one? Turku. Borgo. Turku. Or Borgo. Oh, I don't know. I just want to spend the rest of the thing yeah, now you I trying to teach him to say that right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that ain't going over too well. Um, no, but uh, yeah, I absolutely love Finland, uh, especially. I like it for the winter too, because I don't get a winter here in Southern California. It's one of those places where I get to travel and I'm like, oh, I'm in the snow. This is kind of cool. Um, mm. But also... For the, I mean, being up there north, I mean, my, my, uh, all right. that's all good. Nice. Your light just went, light just went out a little bit, but we're up. We could still see you. Well, look at all those in the background for the. Yeah, the now, viewers. hey, now that I, that's I can beautiful. see all those albums, beautiful wall, guy, all those. Uh, oh, wax you got there. You got a lot of, you got a lot of gold. Sorry, gold I love my lights. Records so- back there. <laughs> I All think you kind of purposely did that, Tarya, because I couldn't see those that oh, no, no, before no. that light was on. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's the light, the light on the wall, let's call yeah. it. You should be uh, proud of that. That's awesome. Yeah, it's very, you should be very proud of that. That's a, that's a lot of accomplishments back there. Congratulations on them. Um, Jeez, yeah. Well. But yeah, being a, you know, my wife is from Alaska, so we visit there too. And I've been to go to Scandinavia, uh, Scandinavia for a long time, you know, um, the summertime, though. We're talking about winter right now, but I, I, I don't want to gloss over the fact that there, you go through entire months where the, the, it doesn't get dark at all in the, in the summertime. Crazy. And then you, yeah, it's such a juxtaposition. Gone. Like you said, though, it's so dark, too, in these, in these countries, too, during the winter. I mean, you don't see the sun, but for maybe an hour at, at most for months at a time. And that's where it could, we were talking about that depression that comes up, right? Exactly. It is really tough country to live in. I mean, mm-hmm. seriously, all the Nordic countries, they are really tough. The climate is demanding and uh, it's environment is everything to for us. Like, uh, you know, it's an inspiring environment in, in general for musicians to write songs about, you know, all that. Right. But it's tough, tough place to live. Um, especially, you know, I... I'm a such a weird creature in general that I really need light. I started feel the importance of light in my life. You know, I I don't necessarily need the sun and the heat. You know, but mm-hmm. the light to wake up in the morning. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. It's black. You start the day. It's dark as a night. You end your day. You have never seen light during the day. It's really. I mean, it. After some time, it will take a dime you know oh yeah absolutely and that's why i was wanted to point out because like yeah in the summertime it's like that and that becomes exhausting too so you're like you're never really you never have like that happy median uh living in the nordic scandinavian countries um i've experienced a little bit and then you know 
you probably know it from from touring too. You got to make sure you get outside too, because a lot of times you're going from your bus, your van, whatever the case may be, hotel, straight into the venue. And again, you haven't seen any light all day. And if you do that too many times in a row, it starts to really play effect on your mental your mental health, really. Exactly. Now, all these Christmas tours that I'm doing, I am always much more tired during the tour because of a lack of light. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Seriously, it is like that. And I need to, as you said, I really need to remind myself to at least get some fresh air, you know, yes. to get out there and have a little walk or go for a run if it, if the weather allows and, you know, really take care because body's there if the mind is there, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the body works in the mind. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think it's a good thing to, to bring up, too, because a lot of people are listening to this all over the world. Of course, we've got, you know, the streams go out to everybody in the world, and they're growing up in different places, too, and, and it is a holiday season. And it is t- it is tough uh, mentally for a lot of people um, to go through the holiday season. It's not, you know, for us, I think, you know, I could speak for myself more. It's a, it's a beautiful time of year. I get to spend a lot of time with my family. I love it. But for a lot of people, it's not. And it is dark, and it's depressing to go through mm-hmm. this time of year. And, and uh, I, I think and it's important. Many people, many people get to be reminded, you know, we get to remi- be reminded of those ones that are not long, any longer with us, you know, the people right. that have passed away. So it's, um, it's Christmas is a family celebration. And, you know, that's, that's what it happens, you know, for all of us one way or another. Yes. Well, there's so much bad stuff on the internet, but one good thing that if you want it, I feel like a lot of people are talking about that and mental health and, and taking care of yourself and, and there's just more connection and things like that of not feeling alone, hopefully, for some people who need to find it. So, yeah, I I think you're right, you know. And those who are who don't want to feel alone this year and maybe don't like the holiday classics, they could go to Taria's album, The Dark Christmas, <laughs> and it'll have a whole new new look on life for you. Maybe <laughs> maybe it'll be the, the Christmas you needed this year. Just make sure you go check that out. I don't want to be remiss to say that, you know, several times throughout this chat. Um <laughs> But uh, uh, Sam and I were talking before, and I think we saw that your brother is also a musician that you've worked with. Is that correct? Yeah, actually, I have two two brothers, and they both um, not that they professionally work with music, but uh, they they are very talented. My younger one, uh, Tony, he's been joining me on stage many times in many recordings, and so he has a great voice and you know, super talented guy. But you know. And into heavy metal also, like okay, are they into like, heavy? Were they into heavy metal before and then got classically trained, or or are they <laughs> all metal? I mean, no, where, where, they, where do they fall? It? Yeah, how did you get into fall? metal? Because oh, you said it wasn't really your that. thing until you got into yeah. the music. So did you kind of you became in a metal band and then yeah. and then found yeah, it? That's wow. what she said, man. Wait, yeah. but where how have did you been how in this conversation, Sam? I got to bust his balls exactly. here for a minute now. Where have you been in this conversation? How did you about, get recruited about, about 15 to join minutes that ago, band? she said that she had one album. It was the Black Album by Metallica. I did know. you zone out there for a minute, buddy? We covered no, that. We covered I, that. I'm rewinding a minute before <laughs> that of who. No, yeah. it was like, you know, the guys um, of Nightwish, uh, some of them, they had a metal background themselves. And yeah. since we were all born in a very, very teeny tiny village, we all knew each other. We were in the same school. And so the guys, they knew that I could sing. I was always the girl who sang everywhere in all kind of little whatever cats name party, you know, everywhere. I was everywhere singing. So, but... The fact that they didn't know that my voice had radically changed because I was already in a university and, you know, suddenly I have this operatic voice. So Tuomas, the main guy from Nightwish, the composer, knocked on my door once. I was having a weekend off and I was visiting my parents. And so he just came and said, hello, I have a demo. <laughs> you know, he just handed over music yeah. to me and, and I was listening to the song and I said, yeah, let's go. I'll do this. Yeah, I love it. And it was, it had nothing to do with metal. It was uh, acoustic guitars, keyboards, beautiful, beautiful music. And so I went to studio and I, <laughs> I started singing and the guys were like, huh, what is she doing? What? Why is she singing like that? That is strange. <laughs> what is that angelic, beautiful, <laughs> light? girl's voice that we got to know you know when she was young yeah. girl 
So no, it was all gone. I, I had this terribly big voice already. So the idea of combining my voice with metal was born in that in the studio. That session. Or in that yeah. first demo session. Wow. I, I love the, the story though of... too of just handing a demo to the, yeah. to the local yeah. singer because I did that too. Exactly I did like that, that too. I would go I... around and hand, hand our, our music. Uh, where I was with uh, Sam knows these guys I grew up in high school. Was, uh, you know, Ryan, Alonzo, Reed and Dan. Like We'd go around, we'd, ha we'd record our music and then like, yeah, you'd it wasn't like cell phones at the time when we were in, you know, middle school and early high school. So you just, you go to your buddy's house and knock on the door and say, Hey, listen to this and see if you'd want to sing on it. You know, yeah. <laughs> that was like, that was the way to do it. Now you send it off to everybody and, ah, man, such a, such a different time, such a different time. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, that was how I started. And then it was like, okay, let's do it. And our second demo was already our first album. Mm. That's awesome. So okay. Sam, you did you did dive a little deeper into it. Well, that, yeah, that was that was what I was looking for. So we okay. got there. We okay. got there. It was a, de it was a deeper about your, dive that that go around. Speaking <laughs> about your history, I did say you're not just a singer; you're also an author. So a couple of years ago, you wrote a book. How was that? Because I, I'm always intrigued of hearing people because I hear how therapeutic it is and and how it feels. Like, how did you feel about when your writing process and and all of that? <laughs> It was actually quite therapeutic. I think it was really <clears throat> beautiful process. Tough like hell. Tough as hell. <laughs> but, no. but it was really a beautiful process because I got to remember things. Um, I got reminded about what kind of life I have been. Um, I think everybody should do that one point in life, you know, go back and check it out, what's really been there. Um so I got to do that with the book. And first I went through hundreds or maybe thousands of photos and memories. And it was really, really beautiful process. Uh, demanding, of course, and I was nervous about it, but it was really fulfilling at the end of the day. It started the journey with my, you know, then later on, like after the book, I released my best of album and as a for my solo career. And, you know, it, it was um, like all done in a way together but, encapsulated um, it all that's, yeah that's that's great yeah. that's yeah. awesome and the process I'm, I'm a little curious about that process you started with photos you said mm -hmm. like to to jar those memories so I, I you said I, I agree with you I do think everyone should do that I haven't done it to the extent of writing a book or anything but through therapy I've been in therapy it's, since since uh, 2013 so coming up on it's been 10 yeah. years now wow shit I've been the same therapist for 10 years um but yeah just going through that and uncasing a lot of your memories and some of them that get jogged um yeah. in different ways i think that's a that, was that was that taught to you to do that with the with the photos or did you just go like i'm going to look through these photos first to get the the memories jogged and then i'll start going through the stories behind them yeah exactly it was like that the the photos actually they helped me to to start the journey they really okay so me. they so someone told you like hey this is a good way yeah. to, to start go yeah. look at some pictures first because i think that's something a lot of people can do whether or not they're going to write a book or maybe they just write their own journal, but go back to those photos. I, I haven't heard that uh, theory before that, that method before. So I, I uh, now I want to do it. <laughs> I was, I was, no, seriously, I was just laying out, you know, before the digital times, I, right. I went to storage and I was lay, I was looking for old photos, family photos, everything that I had. And I was <laughs> laying them down here on the office floor like really like you're looking for oh my god when was this and what was this and then I was starting to do interviews with the people that have worked with me that have been there in my past you know really present and would tell me something that I had forgotten because there were so many things that I had forgotten god's sake I, I my brain I think even worse when I got got to be a mother I think I really <laughs> crashed my memory somehow i don't know what happened but there are like a lots of black holes there somehow in the past i don't i can't remember i just cannot so it was really nice to go through those photos first and yeah, yeah. it sounds like yeah and i agree but after you have kids it starts to starts to change your brain a little bit well, like what your focus is on so you're and mm -hmm. i guess we probably only have so much capacity so our 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 this gets natural cool. connection is like they take priority now all these things got to go away 
<laughs> which is he's, unfortunate, but it's there somewhere. You just have to go look for it, you know? Well, it's also good if you got, I mean, you have a daughter. Uh, my my stepmom wrote a, she's a twice over widow and she wrote like a little book. I mean, it's not anything. It's just more to get her feelings out and reading through it and just kind of seeing what she went through as a son to feel what my mom did. It's it's a cool little piece that I can always like pick up if, you know, even when she passes down the road that I have that and I can pass to my kids to say, hey, this is what grandma, you know, her words, her true feelings wow. and stuff. So I think that's pretty cool that just for your daughter that that she's got a piece of you that she can take from the heart, you know, from. So that's yeah, pretty cool. I, I never even thought of that really like yeah. that. Yeah, that's really nice, actually. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be a good book for everyone to grab for their daughters on Christmas Day. Um, yep. Everyone can go get Tyra's book. <laughs> uh, let's keep shamelessly plugging for you here, Tyra. Well, you got uh, a tour coming up, too. You're going yeah. on. You got a few tours coming up. You got the Christmas one in December. You got, uh, is it the the, the classic? I, I I had it down. I'm sorry. You got another one in February through March and then another one in April. You're you're all over the place. Yeah. And They're busy next year. Yeah, and another one in May, still Mexican tour. Oh, uh, also, Mexico, Central America, they were like uh, El Salvador, Costa Rica, but Mexico, a lot of a lot of cities in Mexico. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the whole spring for me, I mean, the whole spring will be heavily packed with touring. But hey, I can't complain. I love performing. I love being on the road. I love, yeah, I would become very, very, I think, a sick person if I would not be able to perform. <laughs> so I enjoy that. I, I I definitely hear you on that one. I, I am the same way. I, I don't know about you, but it's that uh, we, I, I mean, I'm sure it is. I've talked to a lot of other musicians. We all kind of come to the same thing. Call it a catch 22. When you're home for a little bit, you're like, I need to get back on the road. And then when you're out on the road for maybe a little too long, you're like, I need to get home for just like a little recharge. <laughs> Many things have changed. Many things have changed since the, 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 22 20 21 22 you know yeah yeah but, anything's uh, changed but that yeah. one still i mean that's one I've, I've felt my entire touring career we've been doing it for over 20 years now and it's like the entire the entirety that i've been doing it i've always felt that way if i'm gone for too long i want to be home if i'm home for too long i want to be out on the road and it's like you gotta find that balance i guess is what we're talking about yeah yeah absolutely it is the yeah. same with me I'm mm -hmm. a workaholic in a way that obviously being at home is not just like, you know, I'm a singer and I just sing and you no, know, I do things all the time, prepare for future, produce my records. And I, I'm constantly on the loop, you know, for the future in a way, but still there is nothing better than you really hit the, hit the road and you get to perform, you know, it's, it's the energy that, you get to be fulfilled with right. you carry that inside of you for such a long time um it's a gift that we have as musicians that we can really cherish that um they there are a lot of people that would be terrified in doing what we do you know <laughs> it's not for everyone like no just let, let, let's <laughs> You've seen en I've seen enough people who have been out on the road for a couple of years and it's not for them. They go, they have to go home and I never see them again on the road, but nothing wrong yeah. with it. It's just, you, no. it's, it's our mentalities. It's our, it's the way that we're built, that we enjoy that. Not everybody would. Yeah. Now I miss my family terribly. I miss mm -hmm. my family terribly. And they, when they come, they come, you know, eventually some weekends here in Europe, if I'm touring in Europe, they come to see me, but my daughter is in school. And of course, Thankfully, we have the technology today that that uh, allows us to stay in touch. Right. If it would not be, that would be terrible. But um, you know, I can make her sleep. She she can have her iPad or you know next to her, and I can I can be with her in, even uh, in her while she's going to bed. You know. Yeah, it's, that's amazing. I've seen many moments like that. You know, it's. Um, but of course, you know, there might be some other mothers and would say, "Oh God, how can she do that? She's a mother." No, uh, of course I suffer. It's not that. Yeah. I, of course I suffer, but um, it's still the work that I love doing. And my yeah. family would never ever say to me, my daughter would never ever tell me, oh, mother, why you need to go? Why don't you stay home? Never that has no. happened. So, well, they she, she grew up on the road too. She wants to be out there too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. She 
she would love to. And now again, in uh, on this next tour, they will come and they will sleep in a tour bus with me. You know, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, isn't that the best though? That like that's the, that was the cool thing. Like when I had my son, he was too young, and then he, you know, we just got we we took like an almost six year uh, break between live work. We were working at home, obviously, but we we weren't touring. Um, and so he didn't know anything about that till he was six, and he comes out for the first time, gets to go on a tour bus at six years old, and uh, mm -hmm. I mean, he he was there when he was an infant, but obviously doesn't remember that. So yeah, just being able to to show our kids, like we're so proud of our kids. It's like I want you to be proud of me too, and see what I do. And like this is a family thing. Like you know, these are all your uncles on the bus with me. You know, like your aunts and uncles are are all here on the bus with me. We're all hanging out, having a good time out here. Like this is what it's gonna be like out on the road. And then you're gonna have to go back to school for a little while. But you know, that's <laughs> that's about it. You know, it's exactly like that. What you said, exactly mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting for us, like I, my kids, we've grown up. I mean, Johnny and I have been friends forever and my kids just know him as Uncle Johnny. You know, they're, I have a nine and, and a 12 year old. Wow. And it's funny taking my daughter to see Avenged Sevenfold. And I don't think she fully grasped that Uncle Johnny, whose house we go to all the time, actually like all these people are here for him. Like seriously, it was, it was really fun, <laughs> fun for her to see. And, uh, you know, just, yeah. You know, we are cool old men. Leave us alone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> no, but uh, it, there are some funny moments. Of course, it's like that. You know, I yeah. um, my daughter started a new school. It's an international British British school here in Marbella, here in Spain, and and uh, I go to pick her up one once from school, and the director is there and completely. Whoosh, the, the face got completely red when he saw me. I did not, I, he's very white, you know, the guy is really, really like a British, really, really, and, but his face, like your red shirt, you know, completely yeah. red. Then a few days later, he had gone to my daughter, asked her out from a class. During the class, the director comes and <laughs> my daughter says, well, what did I do wrong now? What did I do? The, the guy is asking me to go out. And no, it was just, for him to tell that he's a huge fan. Of, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of your mom. <laughs> wow. So now it's like, my daughter is like, oh, okay. You <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean she gets automatic good grades? Is that, is that how that works? <laughs> no. <laughs> These kind of funny moments that my daughter, she's like, so okay with it. And, uh, you know, at times it happens and, you know. <laughs> But they need to deal with it. Our children, they need to yeah. deal with it. It's funny. Well, I think it's good, it. too, to teach them that celebrity is not what, like, a lot of kids watch these YouTubes and they, oh, I want this. And they think all these grand things. But it's like everyone's a human at the end of the day, you know, glorifying that, appreciating the music and the art is one thing, but glorifying the people isn't isn't always as healthy you know so knowing that no, difference I, I, and separation is good thing i think you know absolutely true except when it comes to me you can you can objectify and love me for all of the amazing <laughs> things that i do don't you know i am a true celebrity you see you know? what i put up with every week with this <laughs> jeez <laughs> i see <laughs> <laughs> we have fun on the show, Tarya. We have oh, fun. That's great. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I know it's it's late over there in Spain for you tonight. We got to start our days. You know, the holidays. I got shopping to do. I haven't even started my shopping yet, guys. I'm I'm way too late. I'm I'm screwed. Uh, good thing there's you know uh, Amazon and places like that to send you your shit real quick. But uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, one thank you so much for your time, Tarya. Thank Thanks for you being so here. This is great. Out Christmas. Dark Christmas is out, everybody. Go listen to it. It's 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 a good alternative for the holiday music. Uh, mix it in there a little bit. Mix it in there a little bit. Uh, I got to do one more thing. So yeah, yeah, I'm now. sorry. I'm just going to throw it out there. It could go nowhere. But if you haven't heard the new Avenged album, there's a song called Death. And yeah. just putting it out there, it would be really cool to hear your voice doing a song like that down the road sometime. Uh -huh. After I heard Afterlife, I was uh, like, Afterlife, oh, yeah. that's that would be a cool one with your voice. <laughs> oh, I Absolutely. think of me. Thank yes, you. of course, of course, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, but again, yeah, that I 
the Afterlife cover was cool too. I had never thought I would hear those melodies that I've known for so long sung that way. And oh, the, it's beautiful. The the court the 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 different arrangements that you guys did. I mean the violin. I wasn't I was I was going for it and then like all of a sudden I was like, you know what? How are they gonna do Sin's guitar solo here? Yeah. And they did it on the and I was like, with two different violins to do what he's doing with one hand. But however, it was really impressive. I was like that sounds pretty cool. I, I like it that. Was. I like that. That was cool. Uh, it, it was one of, I mean, really, um, it came out now as a, we did this show in 2016. It was a one-off show. I would love to repeat that um, because it was really, I was nervous and, you know, uh, one-off. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, yeah. always like that. You prepare a completely new set of songs for one show and that's right. it. We rehearsed it right before the soundtrack, no, during the soundtrack, and you know that's it, and we did wow. it. But it was fantastic. You know, the people really a uh, huge challenge for me to sing songs from male singers. You mm. know, it's always a huge challenge because it's just a different instrument completely, and so. But uh, I love those challenges and i took them bravely in a way because i really felt like i need to i need to do this and it was one of your songs and it was one of the hardest ones ever <laughs> no seriously it was one of the hardest ones i have uh, to thank you wow. but so well, thank, thank you thank you for that compliment there and doing that and uh lastly uh, actually real you. quick i what you you do have a bunch of touring coming up everyone go check that out um you mentioned whacking a couple of times are you going to be uh do you have any of the summer festivals you're going to be doing here soon? I will be headlining a few of those festivals, rock festivals here in Europe, but down in Europe. Um, okay. Be all all around here. and I, I cannot even mention, actually, because they are not even announced yet. <laughs> <laughs> They're not announced yet. Yeah, yeah, no, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. I'll but, cut uh, that out. Don't worry. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. But All I the would, European festivals, because summer I've seen that you've, you've done them in the past. I, I, I watched uh, your performance yeah. from 2022 just uh, last last summer. Um, and I know that for us, it's always it's always a target when we're in cycle to make sure we hit those European festivals as well. So. Yeah, that would be wonderful to meet. We meet in person, up with that's, yeah. If we, if we I'll keep an eye on it. You keep an yeah. eye on the announcements as they're coming in the next yeah. few months. Everybody keep an eye on it. Let us know if we miss it, that we need to make sure we say hi to each other. And uh, I think that's that that that's a wrap for today, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Um, thanks everyone at home. Thanks to Taria. Thanks to Sam for being in the winter and making a deeper dive on one question. That was worth oh, your time. Go check out her Frosty the Snowman okay. video. That's what this is from. Oh, that's from the Frosty <laughs> one. Yeah, make sure you guys check that. A video for everyone. A video for every one of the songs is is up on YouTube. So make sure you guys go check that out. And as always, till next time. Happy holidays, everyone. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers.